Have you ever wanted to program your own animatronic? You don't. I do not want to program animatronics, Grandpa. That's too damn bad! So get your computer and get your Arduino, and let's get to work. So everything you're going to need for this is some sort of um, little microcomputer chip. Uh, I use an Arduino Uno. This thing is great. I've had it for a little, uh, almost three years, and uh, I haven't had any problems with it. I, th I think... 40-ish dollars on Amazon, so they're pretty cheap. Um, you're also gonna need a relay board. Uh, this is eight. Depends on how many you need to use. Eights work for me, but they sell ones that are one relay to whatever. So whatever you're gonna need, uh, that's all up to you. Uh, obviously, you're gonna need your solenoid valve bank. Uh, I also got these on Amazon. Pretty much everything here is uh, on Amazon for pretty cheap. You're going to need this to obviously control your animatronic uh, pneumatically if you're doing that. Um, I believe you can also use like DC motors and things like that, but I use pneumatics. I'm sure most of the people uh, watching this video will be. And obviously you're going to also need a computer and have Vixen lights and the um, Arduino IDE software installed. Uh, any computer should work as long as it is a uh, 64-bit uh, architecture and Windows 7 and above, which pretty much any computer nowadays is going to be running unless you just use older computers, but uh, it shouldn't be hard at all to run this software. It's very lightweight and doesn't require a beefy computer whatsoever. You're also going to need a power supply of some sort. This is a 12 volt power supply because uh, my coils or yeah, my solenoids are 12 volts. Check your solenoids. Um, it says it right there. DC 12 volts. So just check when you buy them or when you get them, just what voltage they run off of. Uh, you'll also need a power supply. Uh, this is a 12 volt power supply. You can get these for dirt cheap. But you also are gonna want a little connector, uh, ter terminal connector is what they're called, something like that. But uh, you just put your wires in there and then pause it and it goes, you know. And uh, you're also gonna want these little, I forgot what these are called exactly. They're just little, uh, wires, I think jumper wires, something like that, I forgot. But uh, yeah, these are dirt cheap on Amazon. I have I think I got like a, a hundred pack or something and I still have a few lying around. So, uh, yep, that's about all you're gonna need uh, in terms of your uh, hardware. All right, so the next thing to do is actually plug in your Arduino, have your, uh, it should have come with a cord. I'd imagine it would, just a USB port. Plug it in your computer. Didn't think I would get that first try. Then you're going to copy and paste this code. I'll leave it in the description, but I would actually advise going to the original creator's video. Um, click that moment is the guy that wrote the code, but he also made a very uh, in-depth tutorial on how to actually get the software set up, uh, the, your Arduino actually ready for Vixen. So I would advise going to his video, but uh, if you don't want to do that, copy and paste this and go to Arduino IDE, paste it into the software here. There is a few other things you need to do like um, like select how many relays you're using or something like that. I would advise again going to his video uh, and then you're just gonna verify and upload that to your Arduino. But again just it might be best to go to his video if you're having trouble. So then what we're actually gonna do is actually um, hook this all up so we can make sure it works fine. Alright so here it is. This is one relay. Uh, wired up obviously the more characters you're gonna be controlling or the more movements or whatever you're gonna need more but uh, I'm just doing this as simple as I can so you can see this brown cable or yeah brown cable is going to the ground both on my Arduino and also the ground uh, they're labeled on the other end the ground on my relay board then the white one here is going to the five volts the three volt does work but it's a lot weaker um, and then that's going right here to this last guy here. And then I just have a random thing hooked up here. So all these numbers, as far as I'm aware, will work on your board uh, to control the relays. I just have it plugged into a random one and then also just plugged into a random board. But then you can see uh, it occasionally clicks. It goes through this um, little, not diagnostic, but it'll like kind of go through each one when you originally, or yeah, when you first turn it on. So you can see it's kind of doing things even though it's not actually running Vixen. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is go into Vixen. Uh, there's a few options here. You're gonna select system configuration. Uh, I'm going to delete these just so they're not in the way. This is just me messing around. Uh, it's not going to do that, whatever. So we're going to go uh, to the controller section. Then you're going to 
go down, select generic serial, then the plus icon, uh, name your controller. Um, I'm gonna, oops, name my test. Okay, outputs for this controller. Uh, this is also up to you. Uh, normally I'd have this selected to eight since I have a eight track relay board, but I'm just using one relay for this video. So I'm just selecting one. Okay. Then you're going to set up change. This I think is automatic as far as I'm aware. Um, I just have it plugged into my USB and then I have to text it. So then we're gonna send a text header. I'm gonna type these two. Uh, I forgot this. Uh, Forgot what this Aquarius, I think. Uh, and then uh, exclamation point. So the text header. Okay. So you're putting it loose. Yes. Okay. And then you can hear this stopped clicking, which is a good thing. Then we're going to add another element, single item. Uh, again, this is as many as you were controlling. So oh, when I had my whole stage set up, I had each character, um, or each movement. So then, new element name. Uh, I think I'll just call it new, whatever. All right, yes, no. I would not like to configure dimming curve. Ignore that, okay? Then patch these two, Gen uh, test and your movement. Patch the elements, okay? And then, moment of truth if this actually worked. It might be connected to the wrong. Okay, so I just need to find which one of these it's uh, sending the uh, signal to. All right, so I found the, uh, the port that it was working out of. And now you can see I made a quick little test program and then it is working. Okay, so our next step is actually going to be wiring the solenoids up. So this will um, depend on what, like uh, how many, uh, solenoids you'll be controlling. So when I had my uh, full stage set up, I had all the negative, uh, all the negative wires from the solenoids. They were all bunched up into a wire nut and then a single one went to the negative terminal on this. So for this, uh, it's only going to be the negative wire going straight to a single uh, coil. But for that, it was, um, it, you did need to kind of uh, wire differently. It's it's the same in principle, but you, it was just slightly more complicated. But uh, this this works just for the sake of demonstration. So now I have the negative from my valve bank going over to the negative over here on my power supply. And now for the positive current, you'll have one of the wires hooked up to the positive side on the if it'll focus on the power supply, going to this port on the relay board, the far left or right, depending on how you're looking at it. And then you'll have one in the middle and the one in the middle will go to the positive side of your solenoids. So now, moment of truth, if this is wired correctly, a small light will go and then it should make a loud pop noise or not a pop, but more of a click, you know. All right, so that means everything electronically is working great. So now the next step is to actually uh, hook everything up pneumatically. All right, so now these are all hooked up. You can see the airlines just from the valve bank over to a cylinder. And then the valve bank is connected to an air compressor. Uh, pretty simple stuff. All right, so ignoring the air leaks, you can see a cylinder is working fine. Okay, now I just have a simple alternating script uh, right here. And then I'll hit play and... All right, so now the next step to actually making a show is to uh, get audio. If you're gonna be making music or recording music or just like a little skit, just use their uh, whatever recording software you wanna use, uh, Audacity or uh, just your generic microphone, whatever works for you. But if you're gonna download music, just download uh, MP3 and MP4 files are supported. Obviously MP4 won't have the video, but the audio will still work. I'm not gonna tell you exactly where to get your music. That's up to you. 
uh, I wouldn't condone, you know, pirating MP3s or anything like that. So always make sure to download legal music that you purchased. Uh, and yeah, so once you've downloaded your legally acquired music, you're gonna go back to Vixen and then bring that up. New sequence. Uh, this is what you'll click every time you're making a new show. Get out of there. All right, so then you'll see when you're playing it, obviously there's no music. You're gonna want music to actually go off of, you know, when you're programming, so it's at least a little accurate. So then you're gonna wanna go ahead and click the music note icon right there. Click it. Then go to your downloads folder. I actually don't know where my downloads folder is. All right, so then once you selected your music, it'll automatically just pop up there. And then you hit play. Obviously music plays. Uh, what else would you expect really? But then, I was thinking, okay, now how do I actually, you know, program uh, my, my animatronic? So basically, you go over here, you see a bunch of options. Uh, this is a Christmas lights controlling software, so a lot of these are, you know, things you use, sure, twinkle, all that fun stuff for Christmas lights. Well, for an animatronic, personally, I've always used the Dissolve, because it's, it's just a white bar, it just sends a signal over, hit play, and then simple as that. Um, some of the other ones work, but they, they you need to, they're, they're just tedious. I wouldn't really bother with messing around with them. Uh, alternating is really the only one that is kind of viable, but even that's kind of, like it, every time it hits red or green, I forgot which one. It, it's, I wouldn't really advise it. Just use Dissolve if you're not trying to give yourself a migraine. But uh, after that, you can see, this is pretty much how you go about doing it. You just drag and drop it, uh, select how long you want it to time it correctly. Something you could do potentially is just copy it and then paste it. So like if you're doing something like, um, for example, on my, my stage setup, I had like a little flag and like a, the moon guy would jump up and down. What I would do is usually just get a basic understanding of the tempo of the music and then make a quick five second or so loop of what I was going to do and then I would uh, select it so like say like it was going with a drum beat or something like that and then I would paste it throughout the entire song um, that definitely helped uh, keep it easier I wouldn't do that for something like mouth movements unless your song is like the same few words over and over again which could be a few for all I know but um yeah other than that that's pretty much all you need to know about actually programming there are some other fun things you can do like you can speed up your program um, it makes the music fast. Not sure why you'd want to do that, really. Uh, slowing it down actually could be useful uh, in some instances if you're just trying to get it like, really precise, but I've never had to do that. Uh, and then otherwise, yeah, that's pretty much the entire gist of it. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you want to save your file. So like, yes. Name it. Uh, I'm going to name it Poop. <laughs> and then... So then, yeah, pretty basic uh, tutorial on how to do it. It's a very tedious software to use. It works fine though, so if you don't want to break the bank on something like Program Blue, um, personally, I just don't have any interest in supporting Program Blue for a few reasons. But um, yeah, uh, as far as I'm aware, this really um, this only works with pneumatic and um, DC motors. I've never used DC motors. I know some people have used DC motors. I have never had the reason to do that, but yeah, um, I guess we'll just get a quick little sequence showing the moon guy moving and I'll end the video. Um, I don't think this will work at all for servos or anything. That's what uh, I think Botango, as far as I'm aware, is the one to use. I've never really done much with servos, but uh, yeah, so I hope this helps some of you uh, in your animatronic making journeys. Uh, I hope that uh, this could help some of you guys. I will leave a, the uh, click that moment tutorial for actually uh, compiling your Arduino to work. Um, I'll also leave the copy and paste, like I mentioned, in the description. And uh, yeah, I hope this was a help to some of you. And uh, thanks for watching.